So Jesus, God, they never force themselves on us. They never make us choose them. God gives us a free will. He asks us to come to him and to choose him. So when we sing this song, the king is in the room. I just, I just felt it so, so much today. The king is in the room. But what do we do with the king when he's in the room? We have a choice to make. Do we welcome him? Do we receive him? Do we engage? Do we ask him in to go deeper? Or do we just allow him to be in the room with us and we just continue on um, the way that we live our lives? So today, as the king is in the room, you have a choice to make. We all have a choice to make. What will we do with this king? And what will we do with the word that comes from the throne room? We have a choice. So... I pray. God, I thank you. I thank you that you give us that, that free will and that choice that we get to choose you. And even the picture of the last song, Glory to His Name, plunge in today and be made complete. That plunging is diving in fully, holding nothing back. So God, I pray that we all here today in this room with the presence of the King, the Holy One, that we would dive in fully, wholly, completely surrendered and submitted to your authority in our lives and to receive you as our Lord and Savior, and that we could be made whole and complete, and that we could be changed from glory to glory today. And Father, I thank you for the word that uh, Pastor Dan is going to bring, and I thank you, God, for the time that he has spent with you to hear from your heart, to bring this word, to bring it with authority, and to bring it with clarity, and to bring it from a heart of love, because it's coming from your heart. And so, Father, I pray that your word would be received, and that it would fall on ears that are ready to hear, and hearts that are ready to receive what you have for us. Would you bless Dan, reward him, and just do what you need to do today. We give you all our attention, and we, I give you my heart. So we thank you. We thank you today, God, for this opportunity to be here. And would you be with us the remainder of the service and be with Dan. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we thank you today for your goodness and everything that you are. Lord, the way that you love us and hold us. And Lord, for me, it's an honor to be here. And I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, the privilege to be here to share your word. We never take, I never want to take it lightly or for granted because it is the word of God and it is without error and it is holy. So Lord, today my heart is singing glory to your name. Glory to your name. 
glory to your name. I had that same question burning in my spirit when we were singing that song, The King is in the Room. What are we doing? What is the choices that we make when we sense and feel the presence of God in the room? We have two choices. We've got one, either we receive him as he is or we reject him. And I pray in the name of Jesus that each one of us sitting here today has an open heart to what God wants to do and what he wants to do in your life personally. <laughs> I pray that my heart is so pliable and soft that when the king is in the room I can sense and I can feel his presence and know and hear his voice. The word of God says my sheep will know my voice. And so when he speaks, I want to hear what he has to say. I want to hear every word that the king has to say, that the Lord in all his glory has to say to me for my life, for me personally. Because that is where a personal relationship with God is. That is why we have a personal relationship with God, because he loved us first. And now we have a choice whether or not that we give our lives to him or we reject him. And so, Lord, I pray today again in the name of Jesus that our hearts are open. My heart is open to receive everything that you have for me, whatever it might look like. Lord, I believe you want to do something through churches, in churches, in the body of Christ across America that it just doesn't look normal anymore. It's your power. It's a supernatural power by you. And, Lord, I pray there is no rejection. Lord, I pray that there is no rejection in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that our relationships are so intense with you that we understand and feel your heart and move with you in every aspect of our lives and go with you and be led by you. So that is my prayer today in Jesus' name that we submit, that I submit my heart to the Lordship of Jesus, the Lordship of God, the Lordship of the King, that we could walk with Him and be changed from glory to glory. Folks, the only way that we can be changed is if we do something that we have never done before. <laughs> if we continue to do the same results and expect change, it's considered insanity.
And so when the presence of God comes into the room and we are in the presence of the king, what do we do with him? It was spoken here earlier by my bride. He never pushes himself on you. He never says we have to do things, yet he draws us. And then we have a choice to make. Whether to follow him or reject him. I want you to take that to the Lord in prayer for you personally, for your personal life, for where you're at in life, and have just kind of sit on that, but don't uh, let it, yeah, let it consume you. Is that good? <laughs> just let it consume you. There's moments and times like this I don't know to go forward or go sideways or go up or down, and so I just kind of wait on the Lord to see what he would desire, see what he would want to do or go forward in this. Do we understand the preciousness of the presence of God? Do I understand We are honored. <laughs> we are a blessed people. That God's presence comes in our midst the way that he does. It comes from hearts that are open. And so I bless each one of you in that. I bless each one of you in your walk with God. Continue to seek his whole heart. Continue to seek his heart with everything that you have, whatever it may be, continue to seek the heart of God and walk in the fullness of what He has created you to be. Walk in the fullness of what He has called you to be. Wherever He has called you to serve, serve with everything as unto God, as unto God and not unto man. For whatsoever you do, do it wholeheartedly as unto the Lord and not unto man. And that is what we are called to be this morning. That is what He has called me to be. So let's get into the Word again this morning. I greet each one of you. It is so good to see you again. It's just an honor to be here and, and be part of what God is doing in your life and what God is doing in my life, and it's like a family, and I'm just thrilled. And uh, It's just amazing. It's just amazing what God is, what, the faithfulness of our God and bringing bringing us together as a family, and, and we are honored on part of my bride and I, we're honored to be a part of it. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being faithful. Um, if you remember last week, we, we were in John chapter 3, verses 9 through 16, and we talked about this thing about believing, okay? And it's amazing what, how it's, it's interesting, amazing, what every word you want to put on it, but in Sunday school, we're talking and teaching through the whole thing. Why is it this morning the question was asked, why is it you believe what you believe? And then you know you go into this guy we call Thomas, we call him Doubting Thomas, yet I'm not so sure that I am so far away from where he was at, and saying that, you know, the only way that I'm going to believe is if I see isn't that reality? Isn't that for us as well? Sometimes we say, hey, we're not going to believe unless we see. I'm not going to believe something unless I see. Well, you said there was a miracle. There was, an, there was a healing that happened. There was a miracle that happened. God healed someone, yet, you know, unless I actually see it happening, I'm not going to believe. I've been there. I've walked down that path in life already to where if I don't believe things that are, if I don't see things that are happening that I can't believe, and yet I look at Thomas and I've always known him as doubting Thomas, and now I'm wondering if it was, <laughs> was he really doubting Thomas? Yet, you know, he, was, he had unbelief, is what the Word of God would say. And so, what we're discussing here this morning is belief and why, <clears throat> and what do we do 
what do we do with the belief that we have? And last week we touched a little bit on that if we are truly believers, then why are we not walking in the fullness of what the Scripture says and walking in the fullness of what God has created us to be? And here in the Word of God, in, in uh, uh, James or Mark chapter 16, verse 17, it says, He who believes, verse 16, Chapter 16, verse 16, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And so you look at that part of Scripture, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. So why do we make salvation so difficult and so confusing? It takes one mandatory thing to do, and that is to believe. That is to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and He died and rose again on the third day. That's what we call belief. That's why we believe. We believe in the resurrection power of Jesus. We believe and then it says, you will be saved. It's simply believing in Him, believing who He is, believing what the Word says, and then in 17 it says, and these signs will follow those who believe. Now listen, this is saying these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons and they will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents and, they, and if they drink anything deadly it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. These are the signs that will follow them that believe. And I looked at this verse and I said, and I, in my spirit I'm thinking, if these signs will follow those that are believing, why are there not more of these signs happening if I believe? Why are not more of this going? Why are not more of the sick healed? Or is it the fact that maybe I'm a little shaken or I don't want to really pray over them? Or I, do I really believe? Because the Word of God says that these signs shall follow those that believe. And so why do I want to run away from the unbelievers or those that are those that are demon-possessed or those that are sick. These are the kinds of people that the believers that believe in the resurrection power of Jesus, these are the people that they go to. Because it says these people will be healed and set free. If we believe. Well, then you go into this thing we call belief and, 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 you, and you ask the question, well, why do you believe what you believe? And then the word faith comes in, doesn't it? Because without, really, because without faith, you can't really believe. And without believing, you really can't have faith. So they all two kind of go hand in hand. Amen? They all two kind of just come together in that way. And so if we, look, if we look at this word that we call faith, let's go into the Scripture. James chapter 2, verse 14. James chapter 2, verse 14. Verses 14 through 26. Verse 14 says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says that he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? And so we go back to this verse in Mark where it says, These signs shall follow those that believe. And what this verse here is saying, Does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? 
And what this verse is telling me here is I can try to convince people or I can try to say all that I want that I have faith and that I believe in the resurrection power of Jesus and I have faith. Yet, I, But if I am unwilling to walk in it and if there's no signs that follow after me, it's saying that the faith does not, the, the, you, you, you just don't have faith. <laughs> there, there's no faith there at all. If there's no works that follow, it's saying that faith the Word of God also says that faith without works is dead, but does not have works can faith save him. If a brother or a sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of who says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? It profits nothing. It profits absolutely nothing. And I look at this part of Scripture where I see this, that a lot of Christians are satisfied with just going to church on a Sunday weekly, a weekly basis, and, and they go into church, and, and during the week, God is just kind of, well, I've got too big, I've got, I've got a business to run, and I've got other things to do in the community. I'm just too busy to do anything else. But it seems like we... It seems like I, and I've been there because I can, I can preach on this kind of subject because I have been there before. And so when on Sunday I walk into church and I try to think that I have faith, yet there's no works following me, you look at me, I have no faith at all. Because I'm not walking in that belief that God's resurrection power because I put God on the back shelf. And I look at this, why are not more people healed when we pray over them? Have you ever noticed how many prayer hand emojis go up and everything else on the Facebook screen and, and everything else? I need prayer because so and so, da da. But these people really aren't even, a lot of them, the only time they need prayer is if something goes bad. The only time that, if you remember back in 2000 when early 2000s when the Twin Towers were struck, the churches were filled. When devastation comes, it seems like the churches are filled and then we, need, then we need prayer. But as soon as things go well again, there's no really need that we need to walk in faith anymore, is it? There's really no need that we have because we have everything right here. And so my question is, is this why that there's not more people that are not getting healed? Because the only time we really pray over them is when they're sick. What's the matter with, why, why are we not praying over them daily and walking in that belief, walking in the faith that God is there, walking in the resurrection power of Jesus to walk in it daily and show that we have faith and the works and signs will follow them. I had to work through this myself. You see someone that is in need. <laughs> if a brother or a sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of them says to them, Depart in peace, but be warmed and filled, but do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? And I looked at that part, it was so me. You'd meet someone in the community during the week, and, and they'd come up to you, and they'd start, they'd start testifying to you about how things are going in their life, and say, Dan, you know, I, I really need prayers. I, I really need prayers, and that's absolutely fine. I love it when that happens, but for myself, you sit there, and you look at the surrounding, and there's people going, or there's people going around, and, and, uh, there's, there's, and it's just kind of maybe uncomfortable, and so you just say, oh, well, you, I'll keep you in my prayers and walk away. And never remember them in your prayers after that. Do you see this? That, that, was, <laughs> that was where I was at. So why don't I just stand there in the middle of the street and pray over them there? If, we're gonna be, if I'm going to be a believer and I'm going to walk in this thing that we call faith, and I'm walking there and let signs and wonders follow those that believe, I should be willing to pray over this person right there and let him be healed in Jesus' name no matter where we're at. This is the resurrection power of Jesus that we are called to be walking in, to believing and walking in faith. Verse 17, thus 
Also, faith by itself, it does not have works, it's dead. Verse 17, thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But if someone will say, you have faith and I have works, show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, verse 20, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? Here we know Abraham as the father of faith. Has anyone ever heard him labeled that? The father of faith? Did you ever wonder? I have wondered this. What kind of level of faith did this man actually walk in? What level of faith or what level of belief did Father Abraham walk in when he heard the Lord say in Genesis, he heard him say, take your son, your only son Isaac, and take him up on Mount Moriah and offer him up as a sacrifice. The Word of God would say that they went for three days, they journeyed for three days up this mountain, father and son continually walking with him. And yet as I look at that part of Scripture, Isaac could have very well overtaken Abraham. He was younger, he was stronger, yet that relationship between father and son was real. Why? Because I believe Abraham's... Uh, relationship with the heavenly father was authentic and the and the amount of faith and belief that abraham walked in went into his son and he understood what his father was doing even before it happened now if abraham would have, would have heard the voice of god and say yeah right you're telling me to take my son my only son isaac up on mount moriah and refuse to go what kind of faith would that be revealed there would be absolutely no faith because the word of god says that faith without works is dead and so what happened was abraham walked this thing out for three whole days with his son and his son even asked him father we have the wood we have the fire but where's the sacrifice where is the sacrifice? And what was Abraham's response? <laughs> God will provide. How did Isaac believe him? Because I believe Abraham had a lifestyle of faith. He had a lifestyle of belief. He understood the heart and the very voice of God that he communed with. This is how Isaac was willing to follow his daddy up the mountain. He didn't even understand what was going on. This is where we should be at, folks. We should be willing to listen to the voice of God no matter what He calls us to be or do. We don't have to understand. You know, if we understood everything that was happening, it wouldn't take faith to, to serve Him, would it? <laughs> if we understood everything that God was wanting to do, it would take absolutely no faith to serve Him. And so when we hear the voice of God and move with Him, even though it looks disastrous, and go with Him, that is how we walk in faith. That is how our faith is built. Have you ever heard, wow, that actually built my faith? How, does it, how do you even build your faith? By building your faith is listening to the voice of God and having works that follow. Start walking with Him. Get off your duff and start walking with Him. Get out of your comfort zone. And start moving with him. And here Abraham was walking with his son Isaac. And he said, we have everything but the sacrifice. God will provide. And Isaac just, and we know the rest of the story. Amen? <laughs> and the question I had to ask myself as a father... What kind of faith and integrity and belief am I walking in that my two young sons would look at me and say, if I told them that very thing, would they believe me? Would your sons believe you, fathers?
Verse 22, do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. <laughs> and by works, this thing we call faith was made perfect. Verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. He was called a friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise, was not, harlot, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out the other way? Verse 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So faith without works is dead also. And so this morning, church body, we're going to maybe do just something just a little bit different. <laughs> is that okay? Is, is that okay? Yep. They're thinking, oh my goodness, what is this? Jared, if you come, if you come forward and just do that instrumental guitar thing that you do I I'm not real sure um, what that's called John the musician <laughs> yeah <laughs> but what I want to what I, what I want us to do is this we just we just heard the word of faith here okay we heard belief signs and wonders will follow those that believe amen and so what I'm what I feel the picture that the Lord had just given me in this instant was this if we are believers and we're walking in faith, we're going to have Jared just up here strumming. We're going to bow our heads. And you're going to hear from God personally, from what he would want you to do here today. It may, someone, it may be going to encourage someone. It may be, it may be leaving. I, I don't know. I pray that it's not that, okay? I, I pray that it's not that. But what I'm saying is this. If we're going to, if I'm going to, if we're going to start walking in faith, then we're going to have to start putting what we hear from God into action and walk it out. Amen? Is everyone comfortable with this? Dave, you good? <laughs> No, it's actually pretty good if you're not. <laughs> what do you think, Dennis? We don't want to get too comfortable, do we? And so what we're going to do is, is, is that very thing, okay? We're not going to look around and see what others are doing. We're not going to look around and see what so-and-so maybe just... Th this needs to be a word from God that you go... Um, and, and I'll give an example. I could, I could be, and this is just an example. I'm not hearing this. I, this is just me speaking, okay? I'll be here praying to God. God, what would you have me do today? I hear God come and say, I need to go and encourage, I need to go and encourage uh, Brother John in the way back row. And, and so I would stand there and, and then thoughts are going to come into my head like, really, is that really what you're saying? Or is this really what I need to do? What, what are people going to think of me when I walk through? The, this is what I think. What are people going to think of me if I walk all the way back here and encourage John? Okay? But what the Word of God is saying that in order for our faith to be authentic and works that's going to follow, then I have to go and encourage John because that is walking in faith of hearing what God is telling me to do. Is that clear? But if I stand here and refuse to go and encourage John and hear... What did the word just say? Faith without works is what? It's dead. 
And so that makes sense. Now, if I hear God do that to me, but don't do it, if, if there's nothing there, it's just, it's just do it. It's just, you should do it. It's just do it. It's dead. So let's bow our heads and, and hear what God has for us today. And just this, the, the sanctuary is, it's, it's like your home. I want this, I want this so to be like your home that you can move around wherever and, and uh, just, just pray over whoever or encourage or whatever, whatever God is saying. But we're going to have to start walking this thing out. We're going to have to start walking this thing out to, in faith.
Yes, thank you. Thank you all so much. If you're still ministering or to another person, don't let me interrupt. But thank you for that response and, and hearing from God. As I was here, I was... <clears throat> the thought about putting our faith into action and walking it out, these are the thoughts that I battle with. I was like, Lord, this can't be, is this really, what if nobody responds? What if everybody just looks at me like I'm, what if, what if, what if, what if? It's like, no, we take every thought captive. This is what God is saying for today. And so if nobody even responds, we still are obedient to what God is calling us to do, to what God is saying. Because it's not about pleasing man, but it's about pleasing who? God, amen. That's who we please. That's who we walk. That's who we have faith. That's what we walk in. That's, what we, that's who we listen to. I saw Brother Ray disappear out the back door. I'm just kind of assuming you were probably praying over something, weren't you? Church. That, my friends, is putting faith into works and walking it. Well, that's going to look kind of strange if I just walk through the church all by myself and just pray. Praise God. I believe God enjoys that when we're like, come to him like children. Amen, Mary. That's just what he does. That's who he is. Brother Dave, do you have a scripture you want to read? or Is that? <laughs> See, that even took faith to ask you there as well. So I want to put that in. Come on up and, and share with what you feel God is giving you. Um. <laughs> is it on? Yeah. No. Yeah. It doesn't do that. No, <laughs> so... So I, 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 I uh, yeah, that was an interesting journey, but I do, interesting short journey, uh, but I'll, I'll spare it. Uh, but it's not, not a lot of scripture. A brother this past week um, has been encouraging me, and, and he pointed out in Psalms 103, um, how David spoke to his soul uh, bless the Lord O oh my soul and all that is win within me bless his holy name bless the Lord O oh my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth all thy diseases who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Uh, I think. <clears throat> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Does anyone else have scripture, anything they want to share? Just Bishnoknet Fadik, come on up. Yep. God will come after you. Yeah. <laughs> what I what I what I mean is I I wanted to if I thought about as as you asked us to pray. I thought about the people in here and who I should encourage and what I should do. What, and I wanted to encourage everybody. Yeah. Uh, Amen. But I felt like that was coming Thank from myself. Jesus. So if I if I look to the Father and and what He would have me do, <laughs> I felt like He He had, He wanted me to share Scripture just from the microphone, not praying at somebody. Then I started, started questioning it. Then in that second, Brother Ben prays for me. <laughs> and I, 
got yeah then then you asked me to share <laughs> so we serve a good father thank you Jesus <clears throat> yes yes confirmation after confirmation thank you Lord if you have anything else it's right here okay we can attack this gavali gunstock long. We can give testimony all day long. Is there anyone else? Mary? I know I've said this before, but um, and I think all of you realize what a wonderful, wonderful church family we have here. Thank you, Jesus. We so, so appreciate each and every one of you, the spirit that you have for the Lord, the genuine childlike sincerity, the love that you show. And we are so very, very thankful and happy to be a part of this family. <laughs> Praise God. Can we give God a clap offer for yourselves as well? Mary, oh. That's, that's where it's at. Thank you, Jesus. The sincerity of the love, by the love that you have, what? For one another, by this I will know you are my disciples. <laughs> well, you got to say it out loud. I mean, just proclaim it to the Lord, Dennis. I agree 100% with what she just said. It's just, I mean, the love that we felt here is just... Unbelievable. God is good all the time. Amen. 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 He healed him. He healed him. He healed him. He's even good if he didn't have healed him. If he wouldn't have, didn't have, didn't have, wouldn't have healed him. Amen. Amen. Wow. Yes. Yes. Yes, Ben. Um. When you say God is good all the time, um, you know, often the tornadoes hit our area pretty hard um, Friday night, and uh, maybe like 50, 50 barns and houses went down, and um, I think God truly is, you know, nothing happened to our property, and I thought, or any of our businesses or locations or whatever, and I thought, God is good. But instantly I know that it doesn't matter if he decided to take everything we own. And uh, I think it's easy to say, you know, but are we okay when afflictions come and when things happen? And uh, that's a challenge to my own heart. Um, but as we prayed last Sunday for Samantha, you know, God, it seems like he healed her. And... Uh, But, you know, I'm okay either way, um, if that makes sense. I don't want to be doubtful or not in faith, but um, I know that some of us in here are older. You know, some people struggle with health issues and things, and I think it is important that we, uh, that we have the fruits of the Spirit. That's what's been on my mind today, um, that we have that love and joy and peace, you know, through challenges. Uh, we're not, we have challenges in our family, you know, we're not perfect, and we have, we have needs, and, um, but can I still have uh, the fruits of the Spirit? It's a, it's a, it's a fruit that grows from a healthy tree, um, a tree that is rooted and grounded in the Word of God, and uh, in faith, and in believing, it, that produces that fruit. Sometimes we, sometimes I like to just, I wish I could just go out and grab, buy some fruit, you know. And I believe that's why that those 10 virgins, they couldn't just go out and, and uh, those five that were unwise, they couldn't just go out and, and buy that oil, whatever that oil was. Um, it, it's something that has to be produced in our own 
in our own belief, in our own faith. And, um, and uh, that's, that's what I would pray for today for myself and my family, that we would have that, that faith that uh, produces that good fruit. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Talking about the storms, that was <clears throat> they had storms there on Friday night where we moved out of. Got a call from a neighbor and says, hey, I want you to know there's a tornado that just went past the home you used to live in flatten the neighbors across the road and I was like thank you Lord for transplanting us right here <laughs> we're safe here <laughs> but yeah they had quite a quite a devastation going on around there but <clears throat> is there anyone else that would like to share all right well, thank you for walking it out. This continues tomorrow, amen, in the workplace. <clears throat> I was at Intera Bank last week in front of the teller. You know how you walk in right here and you walk in and the teller's here. And the lady to the next was sitting there and she was complaining she had a sore back she's just a bad back she kept stretching and, and then there another guy that was around there limping and and this this is this is where i'm at with this i believe that's why god has convicted me so strongly on this and uh i was sitting there and i thought you know what would happen if i would ask them if i could pray for them right here in the bank well, people would reject you, and there's people coming in and out, and it would never happen. And, uh, and all these things go through my mind. And the next thing I knew, I was walking out and never once mentioned anything about prayer. It convicted me so heavily. It's like... If this, is, if, if this is what we're going to practice and exercise here at the church, then if I'm going to be a believer and walk in faith, it's going to be practiced in a bank as well. And so then you find yourself asking the Lord, just give me one more opportunity, please. Just, you know, just... But this is, this is the, 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 the mind games and the struggles of... And I ask God, why? You know, why, why, is, why is my faith not to the level of where, you know, what if the bank would shut down for 30 minutes and people get healed? Or what if you do get rejected and walk out and you get mocked and laughed? I mean, what did Jesus go through for me? But yet, you, oh. I've given it to the Lord and, and I want to walk. I, I, I want to walk in that. I want to walk in that fully. You can. Is it a cop story? No. <laughs> but as Dan was sharing that, I had a, you know, I thought it was just like we don't need to beat ourselves over the head. Sometimes we miss opportunities, but God will give us many more, you know, and that's my word for that. I had an experience like that a couple years, a few years ago, where I priced a job, and people, they verbally bought the job from me that night, and they said, I'll, we'll connect with you tomorrow, and something was on a heavy spirit in my mind, thinking, I should pray for these people, and I just kind of put it off, and I, it was in Hicksville, Ohio, and I, I walked out, and they never called me, and about a week and a half later, she finally called me and said, Bruce died last night. After you left, Bruce died. He had a heart attack and died. And I was so smitten. And I thought, but I, I, you know, you know, like, I don't feel like we need to live in condemnation. And, but it was just a lot, it was a missed opportunity, you know, it was. But to compliment what Dan said about um, Amy and I, we took, uh, Delilah got married Thursday and last Saturday morning, we took her and Josh out for breakfast, and it would be worth a drive for all of you to drive down to Fort Wayne to the Vine Encounter Cafe. And this lady, 
in the middle of everybody eating breakfast. Did I say that right? Um, but, but in everybody eating breakfast there, she said, hey, I want everybody to rise and we're going to have a prayer. And we held hands in that circle. And there was some people there from Canada that came the night before. There was a hockey game in, in, uh, at, right there at the Coliseum. There was two guys there from Canada. And everybody kind of shared a, a need that they have. And, then, and she prayed for everyone. So it is, that was a modern day wow. story from 2000, uh, what, March of 2023. And we stood in that circle with people that, and there was two people that came in that I thought, well, they're going to just turn around and leave. And they just stood there and prayed with us. And uh, it was, it was a, 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 a really rich experience. So those things are possible. That's, that's, wow. that's, it, it hap- it's happening. <laughs> Amen. And that's, that's, that's it, it, if we have the courage to ask, it's amazing how many people would want to receive it and be blessed by it. And so, yes, thank you for sharing that. I would like to go out for breakfast sometime too, wouldn't you, Dave? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's kind of an inside thing here, but is there anyone, is anybody else want to share, testify goodness of God, what he's doing? All right. Remember, next Sunday morning is what time? Eight o'clock. Should I come get you, Sharon? I'll come pick you up. <laughs> I'll be your Uber driver. <laughs> you can get up? Okay, I'll call you. I'll call you about 6 o'clock to make sure. Oh, he was still sleeping. Okay. <laughs> but we're going to have a service at 8 a.m. over there in the fellowship hall, and then we're going to have a, a spread like a, I mean, there's going to be food. There's going to be mm, easy. There's going to be good times. Verta said she's going to sing this song solo. Come and dine, the master calleth. Come and dine. He who holds the master calleth. Come and dine. So she's going to be singing that to us to come and dine and eat at her table. Right, Verta? Good. Good. And then at uh, 10 o'clock, we'll come in here and have uh, service, communion, foot washing, and and all that. It's just going to be a special time. It's going to be a special time of celebrating the resurrection of our God, our Jesus, our Lord, and uh, we're just going to, oh, we're going to party as unto the Lord. Amen? Jared, do you have a closing song? I think you do, don't you? Martha, do you have a song? Maudine, do you have a song? That one's good? That's good. Let's all stand, and then Dave, would you come and have closing prayer, please? Just kind of re- dismiss us then. Thank you, Father, for for this day. Thank you so much that we could gather together and worship your name and be encouraged by one another.
Father, as we go through this week, um, would you be with us and guide us, lead us? We appreciate who you are. We want to honor you and we believe we have faith in you. We pray that our that our works can reflect that. Um, and you give us courage this week that we could encourage the people around us and and honor your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>